Well, we are back. We told you we wouldn't be gone forever. The sideline scoop. We got a special edition. Jeremiah, where you been, buddy? I've been I've been all over the place. I mean, since Christmas time, I've been traveling like crazy. I was in Texas for four days for the College Gridiron Showcase. I was in Orlando for the Hula Bowl. I was just in Minneapolis for uh, this week, and then I leave on Sunday for L.A. for our guy Austin Allen and the NFL PA Bowl. And then I head to the Shrine Bowl in Vegas on Thursday. So I'm going on an eight-day road trip here, hitting the senior, last of the, the senior bowls here as we come up. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, but it's been a lot of miles, too. We've been getting asked, where you been? And so uh, Greg asked the other day, I, I said, what hunting season is it? Is it even a hunting season? But I know you've been busy with your uh, – other gig and I don't know fans might not know a lot about it we didn't haven't talked about it much on this podcast but you're an agent and I mean this is the busiest time right or one of the busiest yeah yeah so my post career path besides being a Husker uh, radio network guy is uh, an agent uh, I'm a fully licensed NFL PA agent representing guys coming out of college into the NFL and trying to do it the right way so we got a great class this year uh, we got seven guys myself Zach Zenner, who played in the uh, running back at South Dakota State, he ran all over us uh, when he played us in 2012. He had like 240 yards, like three touchdowns. Uh, he played for the Lions for five years. And then Chris Giddings, who was my agent for seven years, uh, is also our partner. So we created a new agency. We got seven guys in our class this year, Austin Allen being one of them, which we're super excited about. And yeah, man, been doing the all-star circuit, combines at the beginning of March, pro days through March. And this is, yeah, this between now and the draft is my absolute crazy busy season. Well, I do want to talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later, but we finally have the, the coaching staff is um, set in place. You got Brian Applewhite, who's going to be coaching running backs. Bill Bush uh, was on the staff and has been here before, but officially named the special teams coordinator. Uh, what are your thoughts on those two additions to the staff? I think Bill Bush is one of the better hires that we've had. I mean, we've talked about what he can bring as an asset to this team, not just from the special team side, but the recruiting side too. He brings so much to the table um, for this program, for the staff, and really excited to see him get brought on. I think that's going to be a big one. And with the running backs coach, I mean, he had some pretty good running backs that, uh, that he's developed. So really exciting to see him get in this running back room. You got Gabe Irvin coming back, Ramir Johnson. You got some transfers coming in. Like everything's falling in place. The offseason work that these coaches have put in and Coach Frost and Trev Alberts have built this staff and now bringing guys transfer portal and stuff in has been really good. So we're really excited to kind of see now we're going to start moving into the next phase, which is spring ball. Yeah, how about, um, and even just Mickey Joseph, which we've had you on the show since those hires, but mm -hmm. since then we've really seen, you know, just a different buzz. DeColdis Crawford was in here last weekend on his official visit, and, you know, he picked Nebraska side unseen because of Mickey Joseph. And so, um, but, yeah, I just, I've just, I just feel like there's just such a buzz surrounding uh, Nebraska football right now. What have you seen and heard and felt, I guess, as a former player uh, throughout all of this? Yeah, you know, you look at it, and we were a three-win team last year, and I think everyone who watched college football went, Nebraska is really close to not being a three-win team. And there's those words again, really close, right? I'm sorry, Husker Nation, but we are. But, you know, and I think that recruits and I think that coaches, transfer guys looked at Nebraska last year and like, man, they really are only a few pieces away from really turning this thing and going six-plus, eight-plus type of win season. And we went on that path, right? Coach Frost never went on that path at the very end of the season of, hey, we, we have one year really, like, right? Coach Frost kind of signed a one-year prove-it deal, which guys do all the time, which I love the competitor in him that did that. And he's put it all out there on the table. Everyone's coming. We're putting the pieces together. And I do. I think there's a buzz. There's an excitement. And we just have to be careful to manage expectations, as always. But I do think the expectation is going to be a winning season next year. And I don't think that's an unrealistic expectation. I think that's a great goal to start with. And if that means six, seven, eight, whatever it might be, it's just it's going to be better than three or four, in my opinion, next year because of the pieces that are falling into place in the offseason. All right, let's uh, hit on some of the portal guys that we yes. can uh, officially talk about. And, I mean, obviously we got to start at quarterback, right? And uh, Casey Thompson, Chubba Purdy. But two quarterbacks in the portal. In the portal, how uh, how big is that to get two guys? Yeah, I mean Casey Thompson, man, he was one. He was one of my go-to when I saw he went into the portal. I was like, man, that's got to be the guy. Nebraska just puts the bullseye on, says that's our dude. 
watching the way he played in the Big 12, seeing the way he can throw the ball, the way his mobility is, too. I think that's a big part of Scott Frost's offense is having those mobile quarterbacks, the creating quarterbacks can do things with their legs. Super excited about him. But then you bring in Purdy, too, who's got a lot of football under his belt. I mean, guy's going to be a phenomenal player. And I mean, don't write him off. You think he's coming here to be the backup? That dude wants to start, too. There's going to be some great competition in that room. And then you throw in Logan Smothers. You could Carlos Torres coming in. You got Harbaugh in there still. Like, Whipple's got to be going, man, woo, let's go, right? Like, he's got a full room of quarterbacks that he gets to just continue to work with and get going. And that's what you want. You want deep rooms. You want competition in each and every single room. So that just makes guys better. And especially at the quarterback position where there really hasn't been a quarterback competition since, shoot, I played. I mean, it went like Taylor Martinez – four-year starter Tommy Armstrong four-year starter Tanner Lee one-year starter Adrian Martinez four-year starter right there hasn't been this competition where guys are coming in and being pushed and it's really gonna make every rep every rep matter in the spring every rep matter in fall camp so that we can really see who's the best guy for the job and I'm really excited to follow that battle yeah and I mean obviously it is it's a competition nobody's won the job yet but Casey Thompson comes in and has played a lot of football and you know has been a starter before and you know with the leadership aspect of things that Adrian has provided I think it's important to get a, a older guy that could step into that leadership role especially with so many key leaders you know being gone from last year but you know we've heard so many stories of, of Casey Thompson you know already kind of trying to you know, not, not come in and, and do too much, but just step into that role. I mean, I saw him yesterday. He's already out there. I mean, he's, he's throwing balls with, with receivers, and uh, we're hearing some other stories of some of the things that he's trying to do to kind of get acclimated and get to know his teammates. When you think about what Adrian has provided for so long on that leadership front, how important is that for, for these QBs to kind of get in and maybe try to step into that a little bit? Yeah, it's going to be really important for both these quarterbacks because whether you're new or not, if you want to be the starting quarterback, you have to be a leader. It's one of those intangible things that if you're a baller at quarterback but you can't lead the other 10 guys on the team or even the other 50, 40 guys that are dressed that are playing on game day, sometimes you can just kind of fall through. And I think that that's a, a huge quality that he, I heard talked about him. I'm excited to see him implement it with these teams and you nailed it. I mean, Austin Allen's gone. Damian Daniels is gone. Cam Taylor Britt's gone. I mean, there's your captains, right? Your captains are gone. So you're looking for new guys to step up that not just on the football field, but in the weight room and conditioning and off the field in the locker room, who's going to be the voice of, Hey, get behind me, put it on my back. Let's go forward. And I think Casey Thompson could absolutely be one of those guys. How about the uh, lineman, the offensive lineman, Hunter Anthony uh, from Oklahoma state, he actually played in the bowl game and was in the por in the portal, which I think says a lot about him. But have you seen much of him? But how big can that be as well, just providing some, some experience in into that O line room? Oh, you mean splits boys? I mean, mean the old the old split boy there. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of that picture, but I hope he can block guys. Um, I think, I think uh, again, you get a guy that brings an experience to an offensive line room that's really lacking experience. They graduated their most experienced player in Cam Jurgens, who's chasing it to the NFL, and you, you're looking for experience in that room. You got a new coach with Rayola in there too, who's running his room for the first time. You, anytime you can bring in guys that have played a lot of football and have meaningful reps and meaningful games under their belts, it's really going to help. I'm curious where they try and put him. I think he's a guy that can play a bunch of different positions from what I've like kind of watched briefly of him. But I'm excited to kind of see where he sticks out in the spring because we're going to need some guys, right? I mean, I think Turner Corcoran's a guy that I would like to see maybe play a little center. I think that's a guy with Teddy Prohaska coming back to be the left tackle. I'd like to see maybe Turner bumps inside. He's super athletic. He needs to get a little stronger. But I think that he's a candidate for that. Maybe Nuri bumps inside. And then the number one guy I'm really excited for in the O-line room uh, is Henry. Henry Latoski, man. I, I heard nothing but phenomenal things about that kid. And I'm really excited to see him get his opportunity to ch chase that starting job. So uh, we have gotten a lot of questions, um, you know, since Cam Jurgens has announced that he was going to the NFL Who's going to play center? And, you know, probably, again, it'll be a, a competition, and we'll see. But uh, what, what's that process look like for a guy, like you mentioned, maybe if it's Turner or whoever it might be, that's played on the line and has been playing on the line, but maybe making that switch to playing center? Yeah, it's a huge switch, and especially with a new quarterback. The quicker they can find a starting center, the faster that center and whoever the starting quarterback is can start building that relationship. The center-quarterback relationship is sacred. 
I mean, you guys have to be one brain working together on so many different fronts. And that's why I think Cam and Adrian were basically so close that when Adrian left, I think Cam was like, I don't want to do this again with another quarterback for one year. So, I mean, if you're looking to move a guy to center, you're looking for, hey, who can athletically fit what we need them to do in our screen game and our outside zone scheme and who can be a leader of those five guys up front. Trent Hickson's a guy that comes to mind. He's played some football. Nuri's a guy I'm sure could snap the football as well. Turner Corcoran. But a lot of that is just who can consistently get the job done week in and week out as far as what it takes to play the center position. And when you got guys that are transferring from guard to center, it's not as drastic. But center to tackle, center to, or tackle to center can be a little bit harder of a change. But I do think that with Turner being a younger player still, I mean, only really one year of starting under his belt, he still has a lot of development in his game that it wouldn't be a drastic shift to jump him inside this early. Any other uh, players uh, that really kind of uh, you're excited about in the portal that we should hit on? Um, not, not really. Um, to be honest, I haven't followed it a ton. Uh, yeah. once spring ball, once spring ball gets rocking and rolling, I tell Gray all the time, like, if you're not on the two deep, I really don't care who you are. <laughs> um, I love you guys all, but until you prove to me, you can play like you're just another guy in the crowd. So I'm excited for spring ball to get rocking and seeing the emergence. I always love spring ball when you have that guy who nobody really knew, or maybe a coach mentioned one time, but he just has a fantastic winter conditioning and then just leaps the depth chart in spring. And you're like, Whoa, who's that guy? Right. I think we'll see some of that this year. I think with the amount of new faces, with guys that are going to be getting pushed, maybe some guys that have been here, like watching those guys take that jump to the next level is always something that's really exciting to watch in spring ball. I do think there are some exciting names, obviously, that, that are coming in. But, you know, and Greg and I have talked about this. The big thing is they hit big needs, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you got a punter, the FCS punter of the year. You got Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, you you just got some some needs some um some older defensive backs and you got some wide receivers some uh it's just kind of some of the needs some of the big needs and um, filling some of those rooms that might have been a little bit younger with some older guys I, I think they um, hit the needs that they really needed out of the portal. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and the number one need, in my opinion, was the DB's room, right? I mean, you, you lost a ton out of that room. And even with, you could call JoJo Doman kind of that nickel hybrid where he played some DB too, and he's gone. So I agree. I think they identified it, they identified needs and they addressed those needs through both recruiting, right? I mean, we had a, I remember we did our signing day, a lot of DB's in that class, but also through the portal, which is really important when you're trying to get things instead of a, a rebuild, kind of a, we need to win now. I mean, look, Look what Michigan State did, right? I mean, Mel Tucker went out there and just absolutely hammered the transfer portal, and now he's making $90 million, right? So it works if you can make it work. And so I think that's kind of the, the blueprint that we're going to try and follow is address needs in the portal and hope we hit on the guys that we brought in and develop them the right way and then try and put a really quality product out there on the field in the fall. So you uh, have kind of been around and, and worked out with some of these guys uh, during this time, but what's this – time like now um, as you start getting into mandatory you know workouts lifting but you're not actually you know practicing but this time between now and and the first practice of spring ball what are these guys going through what are they looking to kind of accomplish here in these next couple of months oh this is this is bigger faster stronger this is bulking season at its best, right? This is time to, you don't have to worry about being in conditioning. You don't have to worry about playing a 90 play game. This is about growing muscle, growing strength, continuing to work on your linear and lateral speed. But this is a big time hit in the weight room type of season, really the biggest time of the years in the winter. And then you get into spring ball, you got to tamper it down a little bit in the weight room, kind of get back into it. But then the summertime, you really go into the conditioning piece of it. But right now, there's not a lot of conditioning. It's just a lot of explosive movements, continuing to build up everything that you lost from the season, right? I mean, you got to kind of get back on track there. But this six to eight weeks between when school starts and when spring ball hits is just gigantically important for so many players, and especially young players, 
of really getting their first full off season, right? I mean, some of these guys that came here that were freshmen got here in June or July haven't had a winter conditioning yet. So this is a massive time for those guys, Duvall and crew down there, to just really get going, getting guys right. But also guys that were dinged up, had some surgeries, getting as healthy as you can, as quickly as you can, so you can try and either participate in spring ball or be full go for summer conditioning as well. I've always heard that this is the time when leaders emerge, when leaders kind of come forward for teams, and it's also kind of the time when a lot of that chemistry gets built for teams. Why is that? Because it's hard. It's tough, right? Like, you're, it's a grind. And it, week in and week out, day in and day out, getting up at 615 lifts, 745 runs, like, it's tough. And so when things get hard, like, who do you lean on? Or who emerges that brings guys and makes the people around them better? Not necessarily being like a rah, rah like, come on, guys. But, like, <laughs> who shows up and is just going to work and is like, okay, if you can follow me or I'm going to leave you in my dust. And that's where those leaders really emerge is – the guys that do all the little things right. I mean, you don't have to be a vocal, crazy guy. I mean, you show up on time. You don't skip reps. You hold others accountable even when it's uncomfortable, right? Like, you see someone skipping reps, and you call them out because you're not cheating anyone but the team. Like, you can cheat yourself. Cool, I don't care if you cheat yourself, but if you're cheating the team, that's where I have the issue, right? So you, those kind of guys that emerge that being a leader is a lonely thing. And I think people need to kind of forget that. In a society in which everyone wants to be loved and liked all the time, that being a leader, you can't be loved and liked all the time. It's just not how it works. So I think for to be merging as a leader, it's uncomfortable. But that's what the great leaders do. Ask Aaron Rodgers. Ask Kobe Bryant. Ask those guys that, that were true leaders in their time. They were not loved by everyone, but you know what they were? They were respected by every single person. Boom. Uh, I feel like mm. you got on a soapbox there, but I like it. I love hey. it. Uh, you there. You've talked a lot throughout the season. Um, they, there are some guys on the offensive line you'd like to see put on some weight. Uh, who are those guys that should really maybe be putting on some some weight, some muscle here this time? Turner Corcoran's number one. Um, I think that he, with the injury to him in fall camp, dropped weight before camp or before the season, and really never got it back on. I think he's a guy that needs to put on 10 to 15 pounds this off season in his upper body, especially. Uh, he's got kind of skinny arms. Uh, he's got to get big boy arms. Uh, another guy is Teddy. I mean, even the fact that Teddy's 315, you could see his frame could carry 325 the right way. But you got to be careful with him coming off the ACL. You don't want to load him up too much, but he's also 18, so he should be all right there. You go Nuri, I'd like to see lean out. A little bit. I think Nuri's got a big body. He's got that big butt everyone loves, right? But you got to. I want to lean him out a little bit, get his quicks going a little bit. And then Bryce Benhart, I'd like to see lose some pounds too. I think you can lose and lean out. Well, um, and maybe that means a little bit of muscle, but I think some of his issues were his lateral movement by being too big and a little bit too stiff. So I think with Bryce Benhart, you can say, okay, hey, let's cut 10 pounds off you and see what you move. See if you move a little better at 310 versus 320 or whatever it is. And then I'd like to see Henry uh, put on some more weight. I think he's at a good frame. You can see he could carry 310, 315. I mean, I would like all of our offensive linemen to be between that 300 and 320 range. I think that's a great range for our style of offense, of being physical but also up-tempo. So those are kind of the guys I like to see in the weight room. And I know Duvall and Frost work really closely together, and I'm sure Rayola is heavily involved in it too of – body fat percentages, lean body mass percentages, and how we want to move that weight, not just, oh, he's got to lose weight, gain weight, but there's a science behind all of it. I mean, Dave, the nutritionist, is heavily involved, and everyone has a unique plan, too. All right, let's talk uh, some of those guys that, um, you know, are going to the next level, hopefully going to get there. Uh, this is kind of a crazy process. We had JoJo on a, a couple weeks ago or last week, and I know he's healing, but – um, it's kind of a, you mentioned it, I mean, it's a grind for you, but it's a grind for these guys because, um, you know, you just kind of don't really know what the future holds, but you got to just take it day by day and, and really attack that day. Uh, Austin Allen, you're representing, and I know you're really excited about him, and, and he's going to make some team, he's going to be a good piece for some team, whichever team that gets him, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously you do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course. Of course I do. But, I mean, here's the thing. Austin's a 6'9", 260-pound tight end that I don't think people think are as fast as he's going to test. You know, we all know it. We've watched every game. We, we know Austin can run with the football. But when you get and you look at a guy on paper like that, you just immediately think red zone threat, right? Everyone's like, oh, red zone threat, which is true. 
But I think Austin's more of an every down tight end. I think he can do it all. He's blocked from every position. He's played a ton of football. And so I really think he can be going to this. He's at the NFL PA game that starts on Sunday. And I really think he's going to open a lot of eyes for a lot of people over his blocking ability and his ability to run a bunch of different routes and from different spots on the field. And so, yeah, I'm really excited for him. And what about Cam Jurgens? Where do you kind of see his potential maybe in, in this draft this year? Yeah, Cam... So Cam's one of those guys that teams are going to write him off instantly because of his size, and other teams are going to vault him on their boards because of his athletic ability. He, he's unique. He's very unique because he is a little bit undersized for an offensive line interior in the NFL, but his athletic ability is just off the charts. Like I have no doubt that he'll probably be the number one testing center this year, whether it's a combine invite or at Nebraska's Pro Day with the L drill the pro agility, his 40, his bench is going to be really good. He's going to test extremely well. The question then becomes, he's a scheme fit center, and he's only ever played center. So can he make the shift to guard? I think he can, but the teams in the NFL are very hesitant of drafting guys high if they're true position change guys. I mean, the guy that did, like, showed him he can, Landon Dickerson from Alabama, switched to guard for the Eagles this year, had a really good year. So it's not impossible but you look at what Cam's skill set is. I think that he's going to have to find a scheme that fits him kind of. I mean, I think the Eagles are a scheme that would fit him really well. I think the Chargers are a scheme. Like that wide zone RPO running all over the place athletic center is what he's going to need to find to find a home that falls in love with him to draft him. Currently two guys going to the combine, uh, Cam Taylor Britt, JoJo Doman. But do you think maybe a couple more Huskers could, could get that invite between now and then? Yeah, I know, I know for a fact that Allen's close. He's a bubble guy. I'm um, talking with the Combine people. And, you know, I think that a lot of this, what these teams do is the three big senior bowls are coming up, right? PA, Shrine Bowl, and then the Senior Bowl down to the reseason. And most guys at the Senior Bowl have Combine invites. But what they do is because this draft class is astronomically big – based off of the fact that the COVID year and everyone having a chance, there's over like 1,100 eligible draft guys. The normal class size is close to 700 usually. So I think the combine is still kind of figuring out who do we invite. Like it's a numbers game, right? You right. can only invite so many guys. So I think they're still waiting to see, okay, has everyone declared that are underage? Because we have to invite those guys too. And who's playing well at these senior games? Because there's just not enough time in the day for these scouts to watch all the film. And so our job as agents, too, is to get a little bit more of, hey, this is the film you should watch, right? Like, I'm Austin Allen's agent. Everyone on here is going, well, he better watch the Wisconsin game. Like, yeah, that's the one you point him to, right? Like, that's good agent work. So trying to get that type of stuff done, too. But Austin's really going to make it for himself. Uh, Cam's going to make it for himself based off of how they played um, in the last year. And I think both those guys are good enough to play in the NFL. Cam, obviously, Cam and JoJo. I think Samore, too. All right, let's talk about uh, current NFL. I mean, I, I know you're excited about your Chiefs. Stop. Stop <laughs> it. Go Bills always. Somewhere Ben McLaughlin and I are having a fight because he's a diehard Chiefs fan. But Bills all the way, baby. I was told to ask you about your table dive. Is that video somewhere accessible? Yeah. On my phone. Yeah, I may or may not at the AFC Championship game last year went through a table in Bill's gear because that's what you do when you run into Bill's Mafia at these tailgates. So if I wasn't going to be in L.A., there's a very high chance that I would be down in Kansas City for this for this Bill's game. I think it's going to be an absolutely unbelievable football game. You played for multiple teams. Why are you all in on the Bills? Because I love those guys. I mean, that was my last stop, obviously. And I got to be part of something that was pretty special was the ground floor of that rebuild. My rookie year in 2018 was Josh – or my, excuse me, my last year in 2018 um, playing before I got injured was Josh Allen's rookie year. And so I got to see the growth of what he potentially could be. And Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott run that organization to perfection from – how they do the X's and O's to how they handle players and their families. And they just do everything the right way up there. And I have a lot of respect for that organization, a lot of friends that are still playing on that team because it was my last team. And so I just want to have those guys to have a lot of success. And Bill's Mafia and Husker Nation are cut from the same cloth. I mean, they're just fanatics about their team and love their team through good and bad. And for Bill's Mafia to get a chance to go to a divisional round again, a conference championship, and maybe even the Super Bowl would make me so happy for that fan base. But we have to talk about the Cincinnati Bengals and, and Zach Taylor yes. and the job that he's done. I mean, what a story there. They were so bad not that long ago. 
Oh, they've hit on a lot of their draft picks, and that's what helps. I mean, Joe Burrow is an absolute stud. Jamar Chase, stud. T. Higgins, right? Jonah Williams, their left tackle, no one talks about, stud. And then they go get guys that can rush the passer. Zach Taylor built a great football team up there in Cincinnati, and it all kind of clicked for them there at the end. They got really hot at the end. Everyone was playing good football, complimentary football, and it showed against the Raiders. And so, yeah, they put together. I'd like to see a magical year for them continue until they run into the Bills, and then I love you, Zach Taylor, but the Bills got to go. I think I'm going to jump on the uh, the Cincinnati uh, bandwagon for the rest of the way. Of course you will. Well, <laughs> not against me. If you're not for me, you're against them. I'm definitely not going with you and the Bills. Why? You're probably you, you and Ben are gonna jump on the Chiefs. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go Bengals, and then they're gonna lose, and then you're gonna go. Oh well, the Chiefs. The Chiefs are the Chiefs are good. By the way, I mean you didn't even congratulate me on my winning season of picks. Well, you know it was really fun, guys. I'll uh, I'll join you guys next week. Thanks for having <laughs> me on the show. No, congratulations, Jessica. Oh, well, till next year. Till next year. Oh. I'll, I'll keep my title. There's you no killed us, that. too. It wasn't even close. I, I took the lead from week one and uh, never yeah. never lost it. Yep. All right, anything else that we need to hit on? I, I know we uh, kind of crammed a lot in. Uh, we started this every week in the fall, which we'll pick back up, but um, wanted to do a quick update podcast, and we'll do it again here soon. But um, anything else we missed? No, it's good to be back talking some Husker ball. Uh, I, I do. I'm excited. I got the helmet here. I was wearing it earlier. I was like, man, I'm ready for some football. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for spring ball to get rocking. It's going to be here before we know it. I mean, we're going to be talking spring football here in like nine, eight weeks, and I can't wait. Uh, I think that there's a lot of excitement going into this year. And so, yeah, we'll get back to doing these as often as we can once I get off the road a little bit and uh, get back to a little bit more of a normal schedule. I have to get in the studio and see you guys. Well, best of luck uh, with all your endeavors with the, the guys that you're representing. Um, I know you're excited about them. And then, um, yeah, safe travels, and we'll see you in here soon, hopefully. Absolutely appreciate it, guys. Go Big Red.